お前の旅お前の旅お前の旅もう終わりか永遠の旅As promised in my previous magic only video, Limit Cut is here and we're tackling it with only magic using the same rule set as in the base game. No blocking, damage can only be done with magic, we're using the same 6 pro codes listed here, and we're playing it all on critical mode. Unlike the base game, these bosses cannot be cheesed with stats or builds, and even without restriction they're quite difficult. Before we dive into any of the bosses, I would strongly recommend maxing your defense and magic stats. I'm certain that these are doable without it, but any advantage you can get is going to be helpful here. In the base game, I followed the ABD acronym to always be dodging, but in Limit Cut, this does not work. These fights will require you to not only get your timings correct on dodges, but also with your attacks. Magic is quite powerful and we still have our casting loop we built in the base run, but figuring out how to tackle these bosses without being able to block was extremely difficult. The final note is that I'll only be showing the strategies in this video. I have uploaded the raw footage to my second channel and grouped them in a playlist if you want to see the unedited attempts. So, let's begin our journey. I'll be going over the bosses in order of their difficulty, which puts Luxord as our first. Before tackling strats, let's talk builds. Using cuisine for each fight is essential, and the same mill should be used for each. You want a hardy mill that gives a good boost to max MP. Something like this. For items, I'd recommend 8 elixirs for every fight, even Luxord. Farming these are a pain, but it's also a pain to lose when the boss has 1 HP left. Finally, for build, generally we'll utilize the same build for every boss to make casting better and recharge faster. You'll also want to set magic into shortcuts. These fights are quick and you won't have time to navigate the magic menu. For Luxord, you should only need one shortcut menu with Kiraga, Elixirs, Fire, and Thunder. Luxord is probably the easiest of the bosses with a gimmick of time gauges, but his attacks aren't in a preset pattern. He usually starts with a spinning card attack, and the dodge is simple, just roll when they stop spinning. His next attack has him stacking cards on the ground, and if you're familiar with this fight you might be tempted to break them, but just dodge through them and ignore them. It's not worth wasting magic on either elixirs or limited. Sometimes he'll line up a card on either side of you. Wait for them to move outwards, dodge, and repeat for as many times as he does this. If you get hit, don't worry, his health isn't an issue. Mostly we're just fighting the time gauge. For the next attack, we'll finally expend some MP. Luxord protects himself with cards and requires you to hit them the right way. You have time to be patient here, but not too much time. Target the circle and take them out one by one with thunder. Note that you don't want to use a higher version of thunder as it'll hit the fake cards here. When you break the last one, stop casting. We need our MP for the other attack, which usually follows. The cards on the ground will stand up and you need to hit the ones with Luxord on them. You can identify them by turning the camera as they won't turn with it, but the fake ones will. Take them out with fire for minimal MP use and to prevent hitting the others. Once you break the final one, Luxord will be staggered and we can finish spinning our MP bar to knock his time gauge down. Thanks to our magic equipment setup, it should take around a quarter of Luxord's time gauge each time you stagger him here. The only other major part of Luxor to discuss is the second phase. There's a triangle command you can use to get through this phase, but I considered that against the rules, so let's proceed with just magic. You can simply glide around the stage in a circle to generally avoid getting hit until your magic reloads, unless you need an elixir for health restore. For the most part, you can just ignore the cards until they get close to the center. Some of these cards will be fakes, even if they appear to be Luxord, but we will intentionally fall for it. You'll lose some time by hitting fake cards, but breaking the cards with fire should help you get out of the face quicker at the trade-off of losing a large chunk of your own time gauge. And yes, I'm saying you should intentionally fail this phase. Once out of this phase, his attacks go back to normal, and hitting him restores your own time gauge, which makes this fight a pretty easy win overall. For fight number two, I'd suggest Larxene. As for our shortcut menus, we need to make sure that Fairaga and Waterga are available. She's quite fast, but has a consistent opening. She'll launch a combo of attacks which you can run and spam dodge away from. At the end, she'll hop into the air and give an opening. When you see her jump, roll away from her and then jump into the air. This lets you clear her projectiles and stagger her with Vyraga, getting it in a full cast combo. For every battle other than Luxord, you should always heal up with your last cast if you aren't at full health. We're only allowed 8 items in each battle and we can't preserve her MP for healing since we also need it for attacking. Her next attack will be Lightning Pillars, and for these you can simply strafe and dodge when they get close, just don't spam dodge. If Lexine starts running towards you, she'll be prepping to do her slam attack. 
When you see a circle appear under you, you should dodge. I would also suggest dodging a second time as you can combo out of this. Larxene's next attack has multiple variations, but it's not that difficult to dodge. She'll zip between spots and leave a pattern of spots sort of like constellations. Their pattern can be used to predict what she will do. I won't go over each in depth since generally you can just dodge away from her and be safe. The main three parts of this attack you want to be cautious of is when she starts using lightning, does a repetitive airstrike, and when she rushes from the sides. For the lightning, it's time to stop dodging. She'll use four of these and after the last one we'll begin the airstrike. The lightnings we dodged as mentioned earlier. Right after she'll disappear and then you should dodge immediately, then continue dodging until you're clear. If you're early with your first roll, you'll likely take damage here. Note that other patterns can include this airstrike as well and sometimes it might feel a bit random. The side rush is a bit harder to predict as when she sparks twice, she'll either combo at you or do a rush attack. Generally the rush attack will happen if she sparks twice after casting a lightning towards you. And instead of dodging away, you should dodge through her towards the spark pattern. At about half hell, she'll cloak herself in lightning and then disappear before creating clothes of herself. This section is extremely hard to dodge, and my go-to was to use an elixir when my health was low and then use Water God to avoid some hits. If you're not familiar with the water spell, you actually have a few invincibility frames at the beginning of it, so if you combo cast, you can prevent certain combos and get a bit of chip damage in. Never use up all your magic from it though, and save the last MP for your Kuraga, as you are also invincible while healing. Final note of this attack is that when Larxene is finished, she'll circle around you and close in for a lightning blast. It is possible to dodge by air dodging out of it, leaving her open for attack if you've got MP available. She'll also go back to her regular patterns now, so focus on getting your casting in when she jumps and does her lightning bombs. Final thing to note is that she'll use her clone phase more than once, and she'll have an extra clone when her health gets lower. I strongly recommend only using items in this phase, as the later phases can take 3 elixirs to clear sometimes, meaning your goal is to finish this fight within 3 of her clone phases to prevent running out of items. Next up is Terra. For magic, we only need access to Thundaga. Terra starts with a set of 3 attacks in a random order. Attack 1 consists of 5 dashes which can easily be dodged through, however the 5th one is our chance to attack. You need to attack almost immediately after finishing your roll as he disappears fairly quick. This is also why we are running thunder spells to prevent travel time. The second attack to deal with is a keyblade combo and this one's quite easy. He'll fire three combos back to back and when he appears before each one you should dodge and then dodge again. Two dodges will put you out of harm's way for all except his third combo. His third one he disappears and reappears above you to slam which can easily be dodged when you see him reappear. Attack 3 is similar to a shot lock and fires three sets of energy bullets. The first set, dodge towards Terra twice when the first projectile is about to hit you. He'll disappear and reappear to shoot set 2 which is beaten with three forward dodges. The last set has a very strict timing as they're in a direct line and dodging through will get you hit. Strafe to the side and dodge forward right when the first one would make contact. After he eases those three attacks, he'll always pull out his shadow who has another set of three. A 1-2 punch where the first can be dodged by watching his shadow and the second you need to memorize the timing. I usually count it like 1-2-3 dodge. Next the shadow will go under you and flash before rising, which is also your cue to dodge. The final attack of his shadow is a massive ground slam which will hit a large area. I suggest running around the stadium during this whole phase since you can't predict which order these attacks come in. As long as you're running around the edge and dodge as the shadow hits the ground, you should be safe. Our next opportunity to attack is after these three, where Terra lands after exiting his shadow phase and returns as Keyblade. Sometimes Terra will go to the center stage and summon an arena of darkness. During this attack, you should only focus on dodging and preventing getting hit. It's easiest if you can keep the beams of light in your view and run in the opposite direction, dodging when they get close. Sometimes a shadow will pop in and shoot more light at you, and during this, you should dodge through it and set it to the side. This is Terra's whole moveset until he gets to low health, where his attacks will turn into harder variations. The Pillars of Light attack especially becomes harder as now both the Shadow and Terra will shoot beams of light at you. Try to keep as much of the arena in view as you can and listen for the sound cues of both to know when and where to dodge. Near the end of it, he'll spin and shoot dark energy in a ring around him. I found that dodging left and right during this is the easiest way to avoid getting hit. His Keyblade combo also becomes a lot more threatening, two sets of three combos now. Generally dodging with the same cue as the previous, when he gets close, still works, but be very mindful of the slam. Now he'll slam twice quickly and you need to dodge immediately after the first to avoid the second. The dark energy shots can now be three straight lines or the original pattern, so pay close attention and dodge accordingly. 
He also no longer does his dash attack, but goes into the shadow attacks, making the exit from this phase your only chance for damage. Overall, this fight isn't too bad in terms of complexity, just be wary of getting hit as his attacks deal massive damage regardless. Ansem was quite difficult to figure out, and the shorter you can make this fight, the better off you'll be. Generally, you want to stay as far away from him as possible. Let's start with his beam attack. He'll summon orbs behind you that will shoot four beams. First, turn your camera towards them and watch for one of them to start glowing. Dodge around half a second after you see it glow, and then three more times to get the correct timing. If he disappears and reappears near you, start dodging away from him immediately. Lasers will form in a ring around Ansem and he'll charge at you, but dodging will get you enough distance to prevent getting hit. Keep a watch out for the bombs he sets around the stadium. They'll chase you if you get close, but you can easily outrun them. Another attack is where he'll send a shadow under you, then summon a ring of bombs. To dodge this, dodge the shadow when it changes shape, and then delay a dodge for the bombs. His final attack in the main phase is a dash attack, where he charges you three times. The first two you can simply dodge through by sight, but the third one is delayed, so run towards him and try to dodge through when you're close. After this third dash, he'll disappear again then reappear, giving you a brief window to cast, so I recommend Thundaga again here to prevent the travel time. Sometimes Ansem will cover the room in darkness, and his first attack will come quickly. When you gain control, jump and glide in a circle around the room away from him. It is possible you'll get hit here, but dodging is less consistent. The second attack for this phase is that the dark orbs will trap Sora. When you see one shake, dodge to that side, walk a few steps, then dodge again. This will happen in three sets on left, then right, then left, and after the last one, dodge a third time to prevent getting trapped and taking large damage. When Ansem gets to half health, he'll pull you inwards towards him and cast beams at you. The timing is the same as the first phase, but moving the camera isn't necessary now, just dodge away from Ansem. The next phase mostly uses his normal moveset from the standard arena, but with a few changes. Now he'll repeat the pulling move and sometimes spam beams from the sky. This makes it especially important to keep your distance. The energy bullet attack will now sometimes send 6 instead of 4. To dodge the 6 projectiles, you need to dodge into the first ones very early, to the point that it feels like you might get hit, and then dodge again for the second set. The final addition is he will summon beams that shift and rotate while he does his other attacks. These are kind of hard to dodge, and I don't have a great strat for them, but I found that running towards them and then back out seems to help dodge. When back at the dark phase, he'll use these as well while spamming the bomb and claw combo he was using in the main area. These are all dodge the same as mentioned before, but requires you to focus on more than one at once. Additionally, in the dark phase, he can pull the dark orbs in front of him and shoot rapidly at you, in which case you should dodge to the side. However, be careful, because when he is done, he'll throw them at you quickly, and you must dodge through them instead. After this attack, he's vulnerable to a magic combo, so get your damage in. The other part that gets hectic is when he's blasting at you with the dark orbs while combining other moves. You should try to dodge to the side of the orb that's blasting at you when possible, but likely you'll need items through this section as you're gonna get hit. Also in the dark phase is a new attack where he pushes you outwards and shoots dark spheres at you. If you run one way, then dodge backwards and rinse and repeat, this will generally keep you safe. His final new move he doesn't start doing until he's at around 3 health bars. He'll give himself to darkness and be immune to damage, so don't try to rush a final blow here. Honestly, I found this attack very hard to dodge, but I found out afterwards that there are guides online on how to dodge it. Since I wasn't sure, I mostly just kept using items afterwards and staggering them at the end. Save your items for the dark phase and you can prevail. For the next pick, I suggest Marluxia. The moveset can be difficult, but in my opinion, the length of this battle is what makes it hard. As for magic, we need both Thundaga and Fyraga here, and her MP usage will be more managed. At the beginning of the fight, Marluxia will strike five times. Dodge twice with a small gap after each, then three times quickly to avoid. He follows with a scythe attack, which we can visually dodge through each strike to avoid. If you dodge with him though, you'll get hit. If Marluxia teleports to the center, you should start running around the arena. A circle of thorns will appear and you can ignore it, but the second one you need to dodge right as Marluxia grabs his scythe. He'll follow up with one more by rushing towards you and you should dodge when you see the circle form. There's another attack related to thorns and for this one he'll create four circles. One of them will be chosen at random for him to appear in and then he'll pull you towards him. The only danger is if you're close when he starts pulling you in. Otherwise, if you have distance, you can just spam dodge to be safe. He'll do this three times, and on the third, when you hear him make a sound, you should face him then immediately dodge. If done successfully, his scythe combo will continue in the direction away from you. Note that the timing on this one is quite strict, and if you're late or early, then his direction will change or you won't dodge far enough through. Once his combo is over, he'll jump and slam. 
Simply jump over the ring and then use Fire Aga to break his armor. Fire is the only spell that will instantly destroy his armor, so try to be close as to not miss your opportunity. One more important note is to reserve enough MP for a single Thundaga and Cure Aga, as we'll need it soon. Though it won't always come directly after, there's one more attack in this first phase. Marluxia will create spiked drones and then they'll shoot at us while they scythe combos, and this attack will kill you, as it makes you airborne and we can't escape due to the timing. After he summons them, he'll teleport away. Immediately change your lock on to the drones and cast Thundaga. If you're quick, you'll destroy them all before they move. Casting Kuraga right as he strikes us gives us invincibility and interrupts this combo. If you dodge after the cure is over, it should completely negate this attack without any risk of being damaged. After a couple or so health bars, one more attack gets added to his arsenal. Marluxia will spin and pull you in, but it's easily dodged if you have distance and spam roll. He usually does a slow jump slam afterwards, signifying a chance to get more damage in. The final note of this first phase is that you should not, under any circumstance, use items. All of our elixirs are reserved for other parts of this fight. If you don't have MP for the armor, just be prepared to dodge any of his normal attacks, as his patterns don't seem to change, he just does them with armor for a short time. After a third of his overall health is down, he'll use Doom. This attack is extremely difficult, and unfortunately I don't have a method for clearing it. It's also what ended most of my Marluxia attempts. This is the raw footage of me clearing it, but in short, you'll likely need three elixirs and to spam Fyraga every moment possible. Do not wait to cast, and make sure to prioritize casting over your health. You can use Kiraga or an elixir, but the timer is a bigger threat, because if it hits zero, you instantly die. If you clear Doom, he'll add it to his arsenal, but now it won't have a timer. Just dodge to the outside and prepare for the five hit scythe combo from the beginning of the fight. Continue dodging near the edge and you should avoid the damage from the skull, but if you're not on the edge, it will deal most of your health. You're free to now use all your elixirs, spare one, as we need it for the end of the fight. When you get Marluxia to 1 HP, use an elixir immediately as he rises to the center of the stage. Doom is back, but this time the counter is 99 and not 15. He's also completely invincible, so don't waste your MP. The attacks are easy to dodge as he just spins with a scythe, and if you dodge through, this attack is quite simple. However, when the timer gets to 35, the pattern changes, and his attacks will be fast, so dodge when you see him throw the scythe. After he does his final blast, cast Thundaga immediately for the final blow, as the timer speed will increase and Fyraga won't hit fast enough. Marluxia's moveset isn't as large as some of the other characters, but his doom phase is particularly tricky to get past with only magic. Now's a good time to grab a cup of tea, because it only gets harder from here. Dark Riku is quick and his attacks have no preset pattern, nor does he have phases at specific HP values. Let's talk about his mines first. Dark Riku has multiple patterns he can drop, and they'll give away his immediate next move. First pattern is a hallway, signifying he'll jump and then dive, sending shockwaves which you can easily dodge to the side of. He'll then rush you and we can revert to our ABD acronym from the base game. He'll follow that with a diagonal shockwave, a keyblade throw you can dodge through, a diagonal shockwave, and then a shockwave you can strafe past. Once you're clear of the final one, cast Thundaga and get a full MP bar's worth of damage in. You might prevent your first spell with a reflect, but the subsequent ones will still deal their damage. This attack is not unique to the hallway of mines and can appear in other parts of the fight, so look out for it and your cue to get some damage in. The next pattern of mines is a circle, in which he has two options. The first is a Keyblade combo, which we can ABD as long as we're dodging away from him. The second is a drop from above, which has a fairly large timing window. You can tell when he'll do the drop if he jumps and disappears, which is your cue to dodge. Keep dodging away a couple of times as he can place ground mines here that will hit you if you don't get distance. I recommend to keep dodging throughout most of the fight as Riku likes to fake a lot and spam cast reflect, then randomly interrupt with one of his attacks. The other pattern will indicate him putting a shadow under you, which you can dodge right after dodging his Keyblade throw. If you see the Shadow Claw otherwise, it'll have a random move comboed with it. Dodge his random move like normal, and just keep in mind when his shadow will strike so you can time a dodge for both. Afterwards, he'll either drop strike, which we already went over, or initiate the Unstoppable combo. That's not its actual name, I just didn't find a way to consistently dodge it. You can potentially dodge the first strike when on ground, but it'll knock you in the air promptly after. You can use Aerial Recovery, then an Air Dash to stop part of the other combo, but the last hit will get you. This is the most consistent way I've found to minimize damage here. Another tricky attack is the Shadow Dash. I'll throw his Keyblade and then quickly dash strike from side to side. The only safe method to dodge this is to dodge through him when he slides each direction. 
It is for this reason that if he uses a reflect before throwing the keyblade and not a shockwave, you should dodge through it. The final move is the one that almost made me throw my controller out when trying to figure it out. I'm just going to comment the footage of what you should do as explaining this otherwise is very difficult. After seeing his attack, I double jump to glide and then aim the camera towards the center. Wait for three sound effects, then dodge. Make sure to keep the camera focused at the center. And one, two, three, dodge. Now drop to the ground after the third. Oh no, that's a ground mine. And another mine. Panic dodge. Left and right dodges are good. What the heck is this attack? There's a bunch going on. Ah, panic Kuraga. And hopefully you live. Got all that? Basically, after getting to the ground, it's technically possible to dodge the rest of this mess, but it's stupendously difficult. So rely on Leaf Bracer and Kuraga when you get to 1 HP, then dodge out of the mines as quick as possible. You'll probably need your items to the exit of this attack every time, but make sure you get the dodges correct before you fall to the ground, as this combo will break Leaf Bracer and kill you otherwise. Riku is quite a difficult fight, and he really likes to keep attacking. Just stay calm and focus on staying alive. Vanitas is a bit of a rush and ranks quite high in difficulty for magic only, requiring you to save all elixirs till the last half. His first attack will either be a triple slash, which we can dodge easily, or a triple jump strike, and luckily both of these attacks are punishable. For triple slash, he'll do it twice and then jump away, and upon jumping you can attack whenever you're clear of the last strike. For the jump strike, he hovers over you before striking, which is your cue to dodge, and you'll know the last one since he'll use Blizzaga. The next attack to talk about is the third attack. Vanitas will disappear and then reappear away from you while gathering keyblades. If you react quickly, you can punish him with Dundaga, and it'll prevent his following attacks. However, we can't guarantee our MP will always be full, so we need to talk about how to dodge it. Always run to the side, either with or against Vanitas, and stay at the middle of the map or closer. He'll cast three sets of Blizzard and then charge at you after each. The first two sets you can easily dodge through or slightly through the side when they get close, followed by dodging through Vanitas. For the third Blizzard set, you want to be running in the same direction as Vanitas and be close to him. When the first Blizzard is about to hit you, turn directly forward to strafe past Blizzard 1 and then dodge through Blizzards 2 through 5, followed by a quick dodge towards Vanitas as he hops off the Keyblades. Once he reappears and starts following, he's open for punish and you can cast your combo. The next two attacks we can't punish, and these include his Fireaga Rise and Fireaga Warp combo. Fireaga Rise is very simple to dodge. When he dives into the ground, dodge towards his previous position. He will then rise and repeat, and you should dodge to where he just rose out of the ground. Just be prepared, as his final one he might do a Blizzaga Slash right after he rises. Anytime he does a Blizzaga Strike, it is always punishable. His Fireaga Warp combo is quite tricky, but dodgeable. Let's watch the sequence. Dodging backwards is this attack's cue. Dodge away, and then through the second. Dodge away, and then through again. He warps after the first two sets, but will always appear on the third teleport on the left like here. This is your cue for a dodge. Quickly dodge away, then get some distance, and dodge towards Vanitas when the slow Fyraga splits. Note that dodging away at the end is what lines up the slow and fast Fyraga at the end of this sequence. This combo is always the same, so memorize it well. The final attack in phase 1 is a 6 strike combo. The first 4 strikes are slightly delayed, so leave space between each dodge, and the 4th takes longer than the first 3. The cue for number 5 is when he teleports after a cartwheel, and then 6 is a slightly delayed strike from above. The second phase will mix these and be much more fierce. The trigger for this is around half health and he'll jump onto his keyblade swarm and do a new attack. Stay on the outside while Vanitas heads to the center. He'll send shadows and keyblades directly at you. Dodge when the purple keyblades get close and watch for the overhead shadows as they are delayed. When he finishes, he's punishable just like his Blizzard Swarm. It's very likely some of this attack will hit you and it is acceptable to use elixirs at this point. However, once he starts this attack, you're on a timer. His last phase mixes his previous moves and becomes significantly harder. And once you run out of items, you're guaranteed death. He'll add one new attack in on top of mixing them, and that's a rush of keyblades after he appears in front as a five part attack. The first three are all keyblade thrusts, and the timing is difficult as he disappears for longer than you expect. You can dodge directly through and slightly to the side to avoid these, though the fourth attack will be faster and he will directly slash at you, and the fifth will be another delayed keyblade burst. After all five, he'll appear within reach and launch upwards while throwing keyblades. If you dodge right when he jumps, you should be able to avoid it, but it is very difficult to dodge properly. Additionally, you can no longer punish his triple slash attack as he doesn't jump after it. 
We haven't utilized or talked about enemy counters until now, but Limit Cut has a way to prevent players from infinitely comboing bosses, which is why we aren't using the lesser versions for an infinite cast loop. Once you hit each boss with approximately 7 Thundagas, they'll do a unique counter, and Vanitas' counter is a disappear and then downward slash. Because it's easy to dodge, even if you're at 1 health in this last phase, always trigger it, and then elixir after. You'll be rushing against time in this phase, so do not be stingy with the items and ensure you punish every attack you can. The best help I can give for you though is a plug to the full fight on my second channel, which should help if you're struggling with the second phase. Young Xehanort has one of the easiest movesets to dodge and is a mostly straightforward fight. Since his moveset is actually pretty easy, I'll just analyze his main loop since that showcases everything you need to deal with. To start, he'll teleport three times and then attack with a whip twice before a delayed quick third strike and a heavy blade strike. When you see the mark on the ground, you can punish. Next, he'll teleport three times into a keyblade rush, which is a timing like dodge, dodge, then wait, dodge, dodge, dodge. Just note that these dodges need to be quite close to when he hits in order to avoid both strikes. He'll appear away from you at a distance and summon Spears of Ice above. Dodge towards him and pass the ice, then dodge backwards through the ice when it's about to hit. When the first volley is striking you, he will create a second and end it by teleporting three times. He'll either use two sets of three whip attacks, which is easy to dodge, or do his keyblade combo. Following that, he'll do a diving spin strike three times in a row before disappearing entirely and then reappearing and sending a clock outwards. Run away from him and dodge the whip when he moves. Wait for him to disappear and reappear, and then he's punishable and open for damage. This is essentially his whole moveset. However, as his health gets lower, he will start to heal after combos. Anytime he heals, you can interrupt the heal and punish him, though you should continue to cast the Dara until he staggers from teleporting, in order to have enough MP to prevent him from gaining health from the exchange. At half health, he'll stop time and create copies of himself. It's critical that you use an elixir before he starts, as he'll start this move after you empty your MP. While this attack is very intimidating, the solution is actually simple. Just dodge forward and backward. Yeah, that's the whole strategy. You'll probably get hit once or twice, but he won't take your health down very far. When he uses his clock whip, he is punishable just as normal, and you can break his armor with a one cast combo. Just make sure to use Thundara here, as once you break his armor, he's staggered and susceptible to continued casting. It is critical that you manage using your items for the rest of the fight. Your goal is simple. You have 4 elixirs to spare with a standard combo, and I'll use the time stop one more time, reserving elixir number 6. Just note that the next time he uses time stop, dodge side to side, and the cue for your punish is a spinning keyblade dive. The other elixirs you should try to use to minimize his healing as much as possible, and he seems to heal more aggressively as his health gets lower. Once he gets to 1 HP, you should still have 2 elixirs and he'll time stop once again, but this time it's much harder. His clones will mix his standard moves, two new blizzard moves I haven't figured out how to dodge, and his quick strikes from the other time stops, and he's more aggressive. Anytime you see him standing still, you should also be aggressive and cast as much as you can, and recover with your elixir when you're at 1 HP or out of MP. This attack really sucks, because if you don't beat him in time, he'll heal back his HP and the next time you get him to 1, he redoes this. So play aggressively and make sure to reserve one final cast for when his armor goes down. Boss number 10 is Sykes. His moveset's a bit slower than most members, but he has large AoE and is quite tricky to deal with. His gimmick is a berserk gauge that fills over time. As for magic setup, we need both the thunder and blizzard spells. When he isn't in berserk mode, his pattern is honestly trivial and barely worth talking about. The main two things here to focus on is this attack and when to cast. If he makes this pose, dodge just after he charges forward, then delay your second dodge slightly to avoid the rest. As for getting damage in, wait for him to do a shockwaves. If he does two, don't attack as he'll combo towards you. But if he does a third and tosses his keyblade, you're free to stagger him when you're clear of the shockwaves. When Sykes' berserk gauge fills, he'll levitate in the air and go berserk, and you can avoid the blast by hugging the edge of the stage. Unfortunately, you're going to need to hit him to get out of this, otherwise he'll continue refilling and berserking indefinitely. First, let's talk about his moves. He'll throw his blades, which you should dodge unless you're on the opposite side, in which case they won't reach you. Immediately after, he'll slam down on you, and your dodge cue is the moment you see him disappear. His next attack will sweep you into the air if you don't get your dodge, but you can aerial recovery and then air dodge through his next attack. To dodge normally, you should dodge through his upward slash. When he charges and sends shockwaves, you should dodge away from him for the first two, and then delay third dodge to the side when the shockwave gets close. Dodging away on the first two gives some distance, making the timing on the third one easier. 
The next attack is the main life enter, stunning you if you get hit. Dodge through the first to continue walking towards Sykes. Once they get close, dodge away from Sykes. Dodging away helps distance from his incoming shockwaves. Once his gauge gets low, he should ground slam and start refilling his gauge, and this is your chance to break his berserk phase. Use Blizzara or Blizzaga specifically here as they will prevent him from refilling further. This covers his berserk phase, but his attacks in this phase can be very quick and disorienting, so pay very close attention to what's coming next from behind the explosions and shockwaves. When he exits Berserk, he'll have a period where he's stunned, but I wouldn't use items to press the advantage, instead save them for when you get caught off guard and need to heal. Once at half health, he'll start rampaging around the stadium, but you can visually dodge everything. Just note that you want to try to always look towards him as he can throw stunning keyblades, and these will be a quick end to any attempt. If you want to switch equipment to get stun protection, that's not a bad idea, but I opted for around 10 hours attempts out of sheer stubbornness instead. The final note is that his standard attacks are a slight bit different after half health, but mostly he just throws some stunning blades out occasionally, so make sure to dodge these. Zigbar ranks in the more difficult ones, because while his projectiles don't deal much damage, it's very difficult to perfectly dodge while your magic is recharging, and he doesn't leave a ton of openings. As far as equipment goes, full elixirs and Thundara and Thundaga is all we need. Zigbar has two phases, and the starting one is really tricky and always the same, so I'll just talk over the sequence. The cue for this phase is the Sage change with the Hole of Darkness. Left, right, and forward dodges then avoid the bombs and hop over. Air dodge and intentionally get hit to minimize damage. This timing is really tricky but you can interrupt the phase by getting your casting combo in before his next projectiles. This prevents a portion of his attacks. Observe a little MP and watch the projectiles. Forward dodge to avoid both and back out for field of view. Run left, dodge, then cure for invincibility. The damage after is minor, so ignore it. Sky attack here is a feint, so ignore it, and pay close attention to the other projectiles. It is possible to dodge these by running from the center outwards while strafing and then dodging through, but if you take hits, don't panic. These last few projectiles can be dodged by going through them, but seeing them is a bit tricky, so I rarely got this perfect. That was a lot of info, but this is the most consistent setup I've found for this phase, and it's fairly choreographed with little variation as long as you hit the stagger properly. All of that is just to get to a standard phase. As for his main phase, well, I don't have a consistent strategy for avoiding damage. Best help I can give is try not to dodge away from Zigbar as that usually spaces things so that you'll take damage. And you will take damage, but you want to avoid as much as you can. Some patterns you'll recognize like the mines and can dodge similar ways, but others you'll need to improvise. You want to save MP specifically for his barrage of dark bolts attack. He'll start to throw mines, but just as his other phase, you can stagger and prevent him. Doing so with a full combo lets you end with a Kiraga just as the Dark Bolts get to you. He'll likely hit you afterwards, but the fight is a game of minimizing damage and trading larger hits for smaller ones. Be careful of his bouncing boat as well, as you can dodge it, but tracking it and other projectiles is difficult, so I recommend dodging and running in a direction away from its current position. Try to save as many elixirs as you can, but it's okay to use a couple before the halfway point. Last note is that when he holds his crossbows out and baits you, do not attack. He is waiting to counter. Instead, wait for him to do his quick 3 burst combo after the bait and be open for attack directly. At about half health and lower, he'll sometimes drag you into a small stadium. There are multiple strats for this online, but my go-to is dodging around the outside of the arena for the first half, then slowly circling the stadium in the second half. For the rest of the fight, he only adds one more move, which is his standard phase he fires three ricochets instead of one, making it really hard to track and dodge, but that's why it's also beneficial to save elixirs till towards the end. While some bosses have strategies that are inconsistent or very difficult to pull off, Zigbar is the only one that has attacks that I've never been able to fully prevent taking damage on. And for the hardest of the first 11 bosses, Zimnus is up, only requiring Viraga for offense. Before we get into dodging, let's talk about attacking and our single opening. When Zimnus throws out four bombs, he'll teleport, place a mirror, then teleport and strike you with shadow vines. Make sure to dodge through the vines and your opening for Fireaga will be right after. As for dodging the bombs, make sure you have some distance and then dodge through while running into them. Zimnus has a five hit combo indicated by red lasers. The pattern is one, two, one, two, and the fifth is delayed. Outside of this combo, most of his attacks follow a slower rhythm. Let's take this one for example. Count one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. And generally all of his combos follow either the faster variant from the five hit or the slower variant we just went over. The risk is in getting caught in this combo as he can push you into the air and disrupt your pattern. 
However, if you remember the timing, you can delay your recovery and air dodge to get back into the groove. Next attack is particularly difficult to dodge and has little room for error. Xemnas will spawn laser shots around you in almost a full circle except for the front left. Run in this direction and dodge a couple of frames before the first laser shot hits you. After two dodges, Xemnas will appear in front and you can either dodge forward and to the side or directly back depending on your positioning. Just like the other bosses, Xemnas has a special phase at half HP. If you've not internalized the timings by now, you're gonna die here. Essentially, he does a very long version of the slow combo, but some of the vines become out of sync with his attacks. When they hit you, they'll put you back on the ground and give you just enough time to dodge assuming you didn't get hit by Xemnas. After a bit, a sphere of lasers will appear and fire at you. Dodge in a circle slightly away from the center to dodge the first batch and listen for Xemnas' cue for when he'll restart the combo. This time, the combo will almost certainly put you in air and you'll take damage, but remember the timing and delay dodges to try to get grounded as soon as you can. At the end of his combo, the rest of the lasers will start firing. Honestly, my dodging for this is on instinct so I can't explain it well, but generally I try to dodge around the edge of the arena with an exact metronome pacing for the dodges, and sometimes I don't get hit at all. At the end, you'll be left stunned though, so rotate your left analog stick as fast as you can and prepare to heal. He'll do this phase again when he gets to his last few health bars and then after exiting, the stage will be full of mirrors. His attacks will consist of the same patterns generally but be a bit more uncanny, and mistakes at this point will hurt much more due to getting slammed into the mirrors and stuck in air. Ultimately though, if you stay in rhythm, Xemnas will fall. Spoiler alert, secret stuff unlocked here and we're going over it. Now we unlock Master Xehanort and Xeon, but I recommend Xeon first. I'm going to start with an important detail left out of the guides. If you get hit by Xeon's pillars of light, they'll reduce your max health for quite a chunk of time. You can use an elixir or panacea to get your health back, but you can also wait a minute for it to regenerate. This can force you to use items and make this battle a lot harder than it might otherwise be since Kiraga will not restore your missing health. The final upfront note is that if you're getting stunned a lot, you may want to change equipment to protect against it. This guide will assume you learn to fight well enough to never get stunned. The first attack Xion does is to throw a Keyblade and follow with a 1-2 combo then repeat. On the 1-2 combo, the first dodge will fill early otherwise the second strike will hit you. The next attack will have her throw her Keyblade three times and then give a small window to punish. We need Dundaga here as to not miss the timing windows with Fyraga. If you notice her animation, she slowly raises her arm on her right side, and anytime she stands still and does this, you're free to attack. For Xion's standard attack, she'll throw five pillars of light towards you. The first one you should dodge towards her, but the next four you should dodge away. If you just dodge without care for direction, it will mess up the pacing and cause you to get hit. The rest of Xion's standard phase will have her skip twice before either throwing these, doing a 1-2 combo, or doing a split of four pillars which is easily dodged. If she skips three times instead of two, that's the cue that she's going to throw her Keyblade. After a bit of time, she'll add a Keyblade combo to her arsenal. The timing is really tight, but if you dodge just as she strikes with an uppercut, you should clear the combo with a sequence of four rolls. However, if you get hit by this, you must save your aerial recovery until her final strike and avoid getting hit by the final strike or it's game over. She'll also start adding a couple of downward strikes into her standard sequence now, but they're dodged visually quite easy and a bit slower than expected. Next up is her armor phase. Don't attack during this under any circumstance. She'll start with a sequence of five ground slams, which you should dodge through the first three as shown. Ignore the fourth and dodge the fifth. After dodging the fifth, get as much distance as you can to prevent getting hit by your Keyblade combo. The only difference in the standard is that the last strike is more delayed. Immediately after, she'll send pillars of light. Dodge through as many as you can, then save your aerial dodge to avoid her incoming stun strike. The next pillars can be dodged by strafing towards the center, then dodging. Continue to dodge to avoid the Araga she casts. Once you warp, she'll Keyblade combo again, so keep moving away from her. The following pillars of light strat is the same, but instead of a stun strike, she'll do her light slam and you should ground and dodge the others the same as the first set. Finally, she'll end with downward strikes, which you can easily dodge and she'll drop her armor going back to the standard moves. Second phase enhances her moves some, and for the most part, she can use the same strats with two exceptions. Her three Keyblade throw doesn't give us an opening now and can't be dodged the same. The Keyblade will now break into pillars of light and needs to be dodged through wood close. The third throw in particular needs to be dodged at the very last moment and to the side in order to not get hit. This means you'll now need to watch for animation on the single Keyblade throws in order to find an opening to attack. When Xeon gets down to around 4 health bars, she has another unique phase. I've heard that this is endless, but it is not. Unfortunately though, I don't have a strategy as I didn't get to this part much. Mostly I panic dodge and spammed elixirs when I got low. Trade off any hit of her Keyblade for the Blades of Light as they mostly just chip your max health and barely deal any damage. 
You'll recognize bits of her attacks as part of her standard combo, so stay calm while analyzing what's going on. It usually takes 2-4 to four elixirs, so save at least that many till this phase. The rest of the fight is her standard combo, so watch for openings in clear boss number 12. Master Xehanort is number 13, but I actually have a trick or two for this one. First off, make sure to equip Watera and Thundaga. Xehanort starts with a meteor sequence, followed by a very strong magic combo. Run forward to the edge, then dodge backwards until the last meteor, and then to the side. It's known that blocking this Keyblade throw prevents his magic combo, but it turns out you can actually reflect it with water as well. Just memorize this reflect as dodging the magic combo is quite complicated. Next I'll go into a light arena which I'll just comment over for the dodge directions and timings. Go to the edge of the arena and wait. When the pillars of light shoot at you, dodge left, stand still, and lock on. Dodge forward, don't move. Wait for him to appear and jump at the last second. Dodge through the next spinner and run to the edge. Dodge through the next two spinners and then to the side on number 3. Dodge his Keyblade Strike at the last second to invincibility frame both spinners then dodge through the last. After this, the sequence effectively repeats and you can continue dodging in the same way, except next time you'll have a recharged MP bar and be ready to stagger him at the end. After hitting him, he'll go back to the regular arena and change attack patterns. To the middle this time, and wait for incoming lasers. Your dodge cue is the flash, and on the first you should go backwards, forwards for two, and left for beam three then immediately dodge backwards. The rest of the sequence you can dodge visually. Just stand completely still until you see you need to dodge. The spinners will always follow the same pattern. After the second, he'll upward strike you, and it's important you dodge backwards on this one. The next hit is tricky. You need to dodge backwards exactly when Xehanort's Keyblade is at his side, and run backwards after finishing the dodge. He will then start his Keyblade throw, and you can reflect with water once again to prevent his magic spam and get damage. His next attacks will be more lasers that have audio cues, followed by more strikes of what we've already went over. Then back to the Realm of Light. This is effectively the whole first half, just note that when you mess up, his hits are devastating. Halfway through, he'll summon his clones, and this is where you should panic. I don't have a strategy, but I do have some tips. Try to stay positioned towards the back and keep as much of the arena inside as you can. If you get knocked into the air, delay your recovery and dodges to avoid the big blows. Just like with Xeon, some of his hits will take your max health, so prioritize dodging these. I find dodging left and right on the clone rushes help to dodge, but directly backwards is a good strat too. I know it's possible to dodge everything, but it's extremely difficult. Attacks you recognize you can dodge as normal, but sometimes they combo with his others and you might just need to rely on Leaf Bracer to survive. Use Elixirs and Kuraga when needed, but prefer Kuraga due to the invincibility frames. Once out, his pattern should be mostly normal, though the attacks might be in a slightly different order. Also to note is that now he uses his weapons with spinners so the timing windows are tighter and they shave max health. Use Elixirs only when needed. Note that when he does his whip and blade combo, you should stay still once more after each roll and dodge visually. These timing windows are very consistent and have a rhythm to them. When he is attacking and doing lasers, don't be afraid to get hit. Just focus on dodging as much of the damage as possible. Also, you can interrupt him after a 4 hit combo, but this is quite risky. He will also repeat the meteor move now that he's lower health, and if you're out of MP when he does meteor, you have just enough time to elixir before he reappears and throws his keyblade. Just keep off your elixir as much as you can and don't rush this one. Second spoiler alert. More stuff unlocked. Opt out now if you want the surprise. The game graces us with one final challenge after defeating the org, Yozara. Fair warning if you intend to run this. Yozara is on an entirely different level than the other bosses as an absolute perfection check for this run. It took me around 40 hours to develop the strats and get a win here. You want to enter with Max Elixirs, Fyraga, and Thundaga, and don't skimp on the Elixirs either. Yozura has no specific pattern and can chain any move at any given moment. He is so unpredictable that he can even start to battle with his special phase. So let's start with the attacks that we can use for getting damage in. When Yozura gets armor and pulls out his scanner, that's your cue to hop in the air. Start gliding around the stage away from him while moving the camera towards him. He will do this three times and after the third you can stagger him. For this fight, we should stagger with Thundaga and switch to Fyraga for maximum damage. Sometimes he'll only use the scanner once and then disappear. This is your cue to get grounded as he will use another of his attacks instead of finishing the scanner. Under no circumstance should you get hit by the scanner or he'll still and use your items. The next one we can interrupt is his charge swing. He will charge, then swing, but be careful as he follows with two more and they're delayed. He does disappear, but strikes almost immediately, so I recommend memorizing the timing instead of relying on your sight. He will charge once more, and you can cast one time to interrupt him. 
As soon as Fire Aga would hit him, you should dodge as he'll strike at you and then finish your combo. If you don't cast, he'll faint and then strike. The next one you can counter is his machine traps. This attack will always start with Yozura throwing four machines out. The traps will surround you and you must dodge whenever the beam of light connects to the first machine. On the first trap, dodge forward twice and then backwards. On the second one, dodge forward once and then cast Thondaga. You won't be locked on, but it will stagger Yozura, and then you can lock on and blast Fire Agas. If you don't have MP, you should dodge forward twice and then backwards twice on both the second and third traps. Yozura will sometimes disappear longer than normal and then reappear, rushing towards you with a scanner. You can predict this move if he disappears and takes a while to reappear. If you cast Thondaga right as he appears, you can prevent it and get a cast combo off. If not, you can jump in the air and glide away. If you have to dodge, he will then teleport and start sniping. When the lock-on symbol starts shrinking, this is your cue to dodge. After three snipes, he will attempt the scanner again and can be dodged or interrupted like the initial one. If Yozura jumps into the air, he's firing lasers. He'll fire six in quick succession and you should direction so that you are close to him after the sixth. This will force him to jump back and you can stagger and get damage in. If you do not interrupt, when he lands, he'll fire three more. Yozura's sword and laser combo can also be interrupted. The first five attacks can be dodged visually, just note that the double laser is quite fast. When the sword is behind you, wait to dodge until the first strike happens in order to dodge clear. The following combo is possible to dodge by moving forward and to the left, dodging sort of underneath his sword, but it's ridiculously difficult to get consistent and I rarely got it. Just be ready for another attack after he teleports and then after you can stagger when he jumps back. Some of these attacks change after his perfection phase but can generally be broken the same ways. His sniping attack now snaps your max health and the timing is different and harder. For the charge scanner, he now strikes in the middle of sniping and is extremely difficult to dodge it in the third snipe, though it is still possible to stagger the second scanner charge. Now for all the attacks that you can't get damage in. If Yozura uses a slow laser, wait and don't dodge immediately. After, he will fire a delayed laser, then small delay and four fast lasers, followed by two more delayed lasers. A particularly nasty attack is where he tries to steal your keyblade. Yozura will try to capture you, then disappear, and attack three times with a feint, then capture again twice. Note the dodge timing as getting caught is essentially a game over. He also has a very floaty combo that repeats three times whenever he does it. The dodge timing is like this. One, two, three. One, two, three. And then one, two, for the ghost blade behind you. However, Yozura has a much more deadly version when he gets armor. I don't fully know the dodge timings, but the best advice I can give for this one is to angle your camera like so and stay on the outer edge. Dodge whenever he's just about to strike you and continue dodging until he disappears and repeat. I know it's possible to go through the whole thing without getting hit, but consistently doing so is insanely difficult, so abuse Kiraga invincibility frames when needed, even if you have to sacrifice your full MP bar. After all that though, there's still one more. Yozura's desperation move. I'll comment over top, just know that it rarely goes well, so save multiple elixirs for this. First, you'll get pulled into the air. These dodges are timed slightly early as the lasers are a bit faster than your dodge recharge. Once you're grounded, Yozura will do a fainting laser attack. I'll break this down after the phase, but just know that this attack will happen outside of this phase after what's complete and has multiple patterns. The lasers here always come in sets of three. Listen to the audio cues and always dodge three times. Overall, there should be a total of 12 of them fired at you. Now the stage will change and you'll have to dodge Gigas. The easiest way to dodge these is by jumping into the air after the stage change and gliding around the stadium. Keep the camera behind you. It helps to manipulate where the Gigas spawn, but it's not 100%. An alternative is practically dodging on the ground and is completely acceptable. Once you're grounded again, he'll create clones and attack you all at once. You can easily just directly dodge through and then the stage should change again. Dodge both lasers and then dodge away twice from Yozura. He'll most likely catch you with this coming attack, though it is possible to dodge. Just save your heal for when you lose Leap Bracer or the attack ends. The next part will also likely hit you, but it is again possible to dodge. The multi-clone hit can be dodged by a very last second roll. These Yozura clones will always have the same pattern and come in a total of 10. Just watch for the ones behind you. And to avoid the explosion, glide to the outside. So, had enough yet? Too bad, we need to talk about his fainting laser attack. There are multiple patterns, so here's how to deal with it. If he's in front of you, he's fainting and will not attack. If he starts by rushing from the side, it's a faint, but the second strike is fast behind and you need to dodge. The next strikes will faint twice and then strike with a large combo. 
this pattern as the hardest, and you'll most likely get hit and need to heal after. If you do manage to dodge, however, the lasers will not fire at you. The next pattern is a slow strike from the side. You can distinguish by whether he rushes or approaches slowly then follows with another setup. If he appears in front, he will not directly attack, but will feign a few times, and when he changes positions, it'll signal what he's doing. If he moves slightly off-center after some feints, he's charging. There are a lot of variations on this, but I suggest learning how to react to which side and speed rather than remember every pattern. Also to note, when he does this attack outside of the special phase, he will do three separate patterns and each is random. Yozuro is insanely difficult, but in the end, I was finally able to take him down, clearing all of Limit Cut within the original challenge rules. If you want to do this challenge, I would suggest it. Just steal yourself for a lot of retries, as these bosses are insanely difficult, and if you have questions, I'll gladly answer them in the comments below. I'm quite proud of this run and honestly enjoyed the experience a lot. I posted the unedited fights on my second channel if you wish to watch them in full. If you enjoyed this video, you might like another challenge I've done, like this Remnant Secondary Only Challenge with my editor, or if you want to see new runs done live, go check out my Twitch. I'm Glitch the Box Links, and I'll see you in the next Out of the Box Challenge.